Before we get started, I'm assuming that you have something like a graphics tablet or tablet PC that you can paint with. If you don't, I strongly recommend getting one. Now there are quite a few useful features in good painting software, but for this video I'll keep it extremely basic. I'll use a brush that paints solid flat colours, a brush that smudges or blends, keyboard shortcuts to change the brush size, and of course a couple of tools for choosing colours. Now this method is based on making the broad choices first, using flat colours only. It's tempting to go straight to shading because that's when things start to look cool, but if you want to make changes you can end up redoing a whole lot of work. I hate to think how much time I've wasted on that over the years, but we keep on learning. Anyway, using only flat colours means you can make changes quickly, so it's a great time saver. The other big benefit is that you can forget about the shading and details entirely, at least for a while, and just focus on things like composition and colour. So it's one step at a time instead of all at once. Broad choices first, then working down to the details. Which is probably a good principle for other aspects of life as well, but I guess I won't get into that now. Okay, so when it comes to selecting colours, most painting software will have at least two options. One is in the menu, in the form of a colour wheel or some colour sliders that you can experiment with until you get the colour you want. The other is usually called a colour picker or eyedropper, and it lets you choose colours directly from your painting. This is something I use constantly, especially after I've got a few colours on the screen to choose from. Picking and adjusting colours you've already used is way easier, faster, and more accurate than always trying to create colours from scratch. Now it's time to forget about things like composition and colour design and just deal with blending or smudging. I really like only having to think about one or two things at a time, and I find that I can relax and enjoy this part of the process a lot more, because a lot of the hard thinking has already been done, and I'm just working with what's already there. Now I recommend using a smudge brush that has a bit of texture to it, so the blended areas don't look boring and plastic. But if your software only has a plain brush to work with, you can always just smudge a bit unevenly to add some variety and interest. Now one tip that I have read in a few places is to try using a larger brush size than what you're initially comfortable with. A lot of us are perfectionists and we try to get more control by using small, precise brushes. But larger brushes often actually look better in terms of the blending, and the process is a lot quicker. This is something I had to learn after reading that advice, but uh, I'm glad I've done that now. After the main shading is finished, you can start looking at adding details and just polishing things up. You might switch back and forth between painting and blending, just adding small bits of colour and smudging them around. The blending brush can actually reshape areas of colour as well, by pushing one colour into another. You can also soften some of the hard edges left by the flat colour brush just by using a small size for your blending brush and just smudging along the harsh lines. So it's basically this. You lay out the foundation of the picture with flat colour, then you do the main shading, and last of all, we add the details, swapping back and forth between flat colours and blending. It's very simple, and I think it's a good way to get started in digital painting, but I also think it's good for more ambitious art as well. To give an example, this weird clown picture started with flat colours. Well, actually it started with a drawing, uh, where the characters were mostly figured out, but the colour work started with flat colours, which was a really good thing, since I ended up changing the background colour, the overall lighting, the direction of the lighting that is, and the whole shape of the picture. If I'd gone straight into shading early on, I would have wasted heaps of work. For the shading stage, I didn't actually use a smudging brush, but I wish I had, since it would have been a lot faster. Instead, I used a brush that both adds colour and mixes it with existing colours at the same time, which can be a very handy tool. I really like it. But an ordinary smudge brush, I think, is better for the main blending, at least for me. I also used some other software tools like layers and transparency that I haven't really talked about here, but the main process was still just flat colour, then blending, then detailing. So that's it. I think it's a pretty simple method, but with a bit of effort, the results could be eye-popping. <laughs>